everybody. So what we're going to do is we want to set up and do a little test that we didn't have time to do back when it was on the engine stand. And so uh, what we're going to do is try and find out what is the total system stiffness. Now this is a real easy test that you can do at home without a lot of fancy gear or equipment or anything like that. What we've done is we've taken, we have the rock arms installed on the engine, lash set, all that kind of stuff. We've got our push rod lengths where we want them. But we've taken the spring and, and replaced it with the typical uh, flow bench checking spring. The reason we want to do that is we're going to put our dial indicator out here on the retainer like we have it now. And you want to make sure your retainer is pretty well parallel and uh, you know straight in line with the valve. And we're going to roll this thing around and what we're going to do is find out how much lift it gets. Now the benefit of doing it this, this way is that all of your deficiencies or inaccuracies or you know all the precision that you put into it all rolled into one is really what you're going to get for the actual net valve lift or we're going to call this gross valve lift because what we're going to do is after we finish this we're going to take this off then we're going to put the real spring on and what you'll see is that you're going to get less lift with the real spring than we have with the checking spring and that's because of the bending and the deflection in our system which can be a combination of the rocker itself, the way the rocker bolts on the head, the push rod, the lifter, all these different things add up to some losses in the system. So to do this, we set it up. I'm gonna go ahead, I have my dial indicator zeroed. I'm gonna roll it around and we're just gonna count the lift that it has. Then we'll stop, we'll take the rockers off, we'll put the real springs back on and we'll get another measurement. So for example, I'll use some simple numbers. Let's say that my springs have a thousand pounds of force and I put my checking spring in, I get an inch of lift. So I put my real springs in. With that thousand pounds of force bending my system, let's say that my one inch of lift loses 50,000. So now I've only got 950. Well, I lost 50 thousandths of an inch for 1,000 pounds of pressure, which if you take your thousand and divide it by the 0 0.050, would give you a total system stiffness of 20,000 pounds per inch. So if 1,000 pounds will bend my system 50 thousandths of an inch, then 20,000 pounds would bend it an entire inch. So that's where that rating comes from. And it allows us to compare the stiffness of various parts of our system, whether we want to change to a bigger push rod or a different bolt to hold the rocker down or a whole rocker system all in like we're going to do here in a little bit. We're going to do this test with our Harlan Sharp Rockers that we've been running our uh, engine with. We've, we've got tons of dyno time. We've done a bunch of spintron time. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change all this over to the new Comp BSR shaft mount rocker system that uses a, uh, a stock rocker arm on a common shaft that gives you a really low moment of inertia, a really lightweight, stiff rocker on a really stiff uh, sort of bar shaft trunding type deal. We'll do this test over and compare the two systems and then we'll see if that translates into more RPM for us. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. So I'm gonna roll this around at zero and I'm just gonna start cranking this thing around and I'm gonna go slow enough that I can count here once it starts. Okay, here we go. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty, thirty, 20, 30, and a little bit, about 38 or 39 there. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen, get this thing all the way back down here. I'm gonna take my pen, just to remind myself that I had 639. Just put that here. Now we're gonna take a break and stop. I'll put the real springs back on it. We'll do the test over and we'll see what the loss is and calculate our total system stiffness. Okay, so we're back to try this again. So now what we have is the Comp BSR shaft mount rockers, and we're also using the three-piece adjustable push rods that we can put shims and stuff in. That's because on the factory rocker, there are no adjusters. So when you have a hydraulic camshaft, you would use the push rod length to set your preload, but here to set lash, we don't have any way to do that without the shims in there. So we got this mocked up pretty good, and I wanted to make sure that we got the lash uh, really close to how we had it before so that we didn't affect our lift. So for now, again, we have our checking spring back in there. Just gonna roll this around and, uh, and we'll know what we have. And then we'll do the same thing again when we check with the real spring. So here we go. I'm gonna bring this around. And as we get going here, I'll count slowly. Okay, here we go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then six, 10, 
and a little bit less, about 15, maybe 618 or so. Let's make sure it comes back. And there we go, back to zero. So we got 618 here. Um, that's most likely just a difference in the geometries and the setup between the two rockers. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna compare the amount of lift we have with this spring to the amount of lift that we get with the real spring, and we'll see what we get. Okay, in order to do this total system stiffness test, we also need to know what the force is being generated to do all that bending and compression that we talked about on the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and measure our spring. Now, the first thing that we did is we took the spring, we set it in the engine with our installed height gauge here, and you just put your put this in place of where the spring goes and you can wind it up until it's tight against the locks and you can get a reading. We did that, we got inch 800 was the installed height. Now the other thing that we have to do when we have a dual spring like this and we have a retainer with a step is we gotta measure the thickness of that step because that's what's compressing, that's what's effectively setting the install height for that inner spring. And on this spring, it's 75 thousandths of an inch. So we typed that in our software here and basically now I'm gonna use the retainer and I'm gonna set it over here. I'm gonna press go, and we're gonna go ahead and pull. Okay, now I've set this up for the installed height to be inch 800 and our open height to be inch 160, which would give us right at 640 lift. And you can see this is a pretty healthy spring. It's got 262 pounds on the seat, 746 open with 640 lift. And then our bind compression there would have 850, uh, sorry, 846, so that's basically 200 more. This thing's currently set up at 206 from coil bind on that particular cylinder. Now, in, in reality, I wouldn't think 206 is the ideal number, but this particular spring fits in there good. It seems to be working. And so uh, later on, maybe we'll attack that and see if we can find a better solution. But now what we'll do is we'll set it up how it was and we'll run the engine. But before we do that, we're gonna finish our calculations. So we now know that we had 746 pounds that was causing that bending and deflection uh, at that rate. So we're gonna go have a look, we'll get back to you. Back. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen, I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars, we are not gonna listen.